Right here on the table, I have four of XENY's new compact 280 amp hour batteries. Now they reached out a couple months ago wanting me to demonstrate connecting four of these batteries together in series to make an affordable, compact 48 volt battery. Now I think it's important to illustrate how compact this battery is compared to other batteries I've tested previously. For example, right here I have a standard 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. This battery right here is just a little bit taller and has a little bit more depth but it has nearly three times the capacity. Now, if we compare it to a standard 200 amp hour battery, you can see the size difference is even bigger. For example, this battery right here is deeper and nearly double the width of this battery, yet this one still has 80 more amp hours of capacity. Now, I thought it'd be useful to demonstrate the size difference and why that's the case. So I've taken off the lids for each of these batteries. So this one right here, this 100 amp hour battery, First off, you can see that there's just massive airspace around the battery, so that is just wasted space. It doesn't need to be this big. The case could be much smaller. And that is the same situation for this 200 amp hour battery. Now what they're doing here is they have 100 amp hour cells wired together in parallel, and then they have those sets wired together in series. But still, look at all of this wasted airspace around the battery. This case could be much smaller. In fact, it was so large that I could actually mod the battery I added these extra connections and wires and they slide in right here. Now that is not the case on this battery. This uses 280 amp hour cells and they're the exact size of the case. And we'll be verifying that as I tear this down later in the video. So not only is this battery really compact, but it also has a really affordable price. Now, if you look on Amazon, each one is listed at a price of $369 at the time of filming this video. With a capacity slightly over 3,500 watt hours, that means this battery is priced at around 10 cents per watt hour, so very affordable. So if you wanna buy one of these, you can get a really good price, but it gets really interesting as you wire four of them together in series. Now that's why I wanted to do this video, is to show you guys how you can get a massive 48 volt battery at a really good price. For example, all four of these batteries wired together in series gives you over 14 kilowatt hours of capacity. That's massive and the price comes out to be under $1,500. Now, if you compare that to a common 48 volt server rack battery rated at 100 amp hours or five kilowatt hours of capacity, those are gonna be around $1,000 to $1,300, and sometimes you have to pay shipping of over $300. So they get quite expensive. So going this route with these batteries here, is this a better option? Well, in this video, we'll be testing each one of these batteries to see how they perform. I'm definitely gonna test the low temperature charging protection. We're gonna test the capacity on each one of these. And at the end of the video, we'll be doing a teardown to see if they actually have good quality. Now, the first test that I completed on each one of these batteries was a full capacity test. I started by having each battery charged up to 14.6 volts, and then I connected up my new electronic load to each battery and discharged it at a 0.2C rate or 56 amps. Now up on the screen, you're gonna see the results of each one of these batteries, starting with battery one at the top and battery four at the bottom. Remember, each one of these is rated for 280 amp hours. So battery one, we pulled 292.2 amp hours. Battery two, we pulled 291.2 amp hours. Battery three, we pulled 291.4 amp hours and battery four, we pulled 291.7 amp hours. So you'll notice that we got over capacity on each one of these by about 10%, suggesting that these are using new cells. And we'll find that out as we tear down each one of the batteries. Now looking at the elapsed time, each one ran for about five hours and 12 to five hours and 13 minutes. And then looking at the battery voltage curve, as we discharged the battery, the voltage was able to stay fairly flat and we did not see any major uh, voltage sag, especially down at the end of the test. So very good result results here. It's very important to have matched batteries when you put batteries together in series, so this is really good. Now in the next test on the battery, I wanted to see if the internal BMS could handle the full rated output of 200 amps without shutting off, so I connected up two different inverters and started a timer. Now one inverter was pulling 80 amps, and the second inverter was pulling 119 amps, so right at that 200 amp level. Now this actually ran for 15 minutes and the battery did not shut off, so then I stepped up the load even higher. The first inverter was now pulling 124 amps, and the second inverter was now pulling 150 amps, totaling 275 amps. Now this actually ran for an additional five minutes and did not shut off, so it looks like the BMS can handle at least 275 amps for five minutes without shutting down. Now what about low temperature charging protection? To test this out on the battery, I put the battery inside my Iceco VL60 fridge with the temperature well below 32 degrees. 
It was in there for about 12 hours and when I took it out, I connected up a charger and as you can see, the battery did not charge. So low temperature charging protection was enabled. Now I did let the battery sit out for about an hour and a half at room temperature and then it finally started charging as it warmed up. So yes, this feature does work as advertised on the battery. So in the next section of the video, I wanna show you how easy it is to wire the batteries up together to make a 48 volt battery. Now this room is pretty small. I have a bunch of stuff here. So just kind of ignore these other batteries for the moment, ignore this power station. I am powering up the EG4 6000 XP with these batteries, but let's take a closer look at these. Now in order to make a 48 volt battery, you start with a 12 volt battery here, and then you have a jumper that goes from the positive to the negative, and that adds up these two batteries voltage to give you 24 volts. To get a 36 volt battery, you have three batteries and you add a second jumper from the positive to negative. So then you have 36 volts. And then to get a 48 volt battery, you have another jumper that goes from the positive to negative. So then you have four batteries wired together in series to give you a 48 volt battery. Now to get your main power output, you have two terminal connections. You have your main negative terminal here and you have your main positive terminal over there. And that gives you your 48 volts. Now I am waiting for fuses to arrive. I purchased a couple terminal fuses, but they have not yet arrived. So this is not a permanent setup here because I do not have fuses installed, but I would recommend installing fuses on every positive connection of these batteries. Now for my setup, I'm not planning to pull more than 150 amps. So I am using one aught wire and I will be using 150 amp uh, terminal fuses for this setup. Now this battery is currently powering up the EG4 6000 XP. You can hear the fans going. Basically I have the main power coming into the inverter and I have these SB175 connections which allow me to use different batteries on this inverter. For example, I have this 48 volt 100 amp hour battery on the cart itself with its terminal that I can plug into that or I can take any other battery and connect it in and also power up this inverter. Now, one really important thing about wiring batteries together in series is you wanna make sure that the batteries have very similar capacities. We already tested that. We did verify that these are very well matched. And also you wanna make sure that they're completely charged up. You want every single battery to be fully charged so that they can charge and discharge at the same amount. Now, one of the downsides of using individual batteries like this versus just a large 48 volt battery Basically, one of the batteries might become um, unbalanced or a little bit lower percent state of charge versus the others. So later on, maybe two weeks to every month, you wanna check the battery voltages just to make sure that they are all very similar. And then you would take a 12 volt charger and charge up the battery that's lower. Because if you have one battery that is lower than the others, your system will basically be limited to the capacity of that battery. So you wanna make sure your batteries are well matched and fully charged before you connect them together in series. And then you want to come in and check to make sure they are balanced down the road. Now I briefly wanna talk about the pros and cons of using a large battery like this versus using smaller batteries wired together in series because there are definitely pros and cons. For example, we're in my basement. This battery right here weighs over 300 pounds and it was an absolute nightmare to get it down the stairs into my basement. And I'm not sure if that battery will be leaving my house. If I ever sell my house, maybe I'll just sell it to the future owners. I'm not sure. It is pretty difficult to move a battery this large. Now, when it comes to having smaller batteries wired together in series, it's much more manageable. You can put it together in five minutes take it apart, move each battery on its own. Each of these weigh, I don't know, somewhere around 75 to 80 pounds. That's what they feel like. And then you can wire it all back up and you're good to go. So much more modular. You can move this around much easier versus a large battery like this. Now, another pro to a large battery is that it has 16 cells on the inside and a BMS manages the balancing of all 16 cells. When it comes to these here, you have four cells in each battery and a BMS manages the four cells in that battery, but the batteries are not communicating to each other. And if one happens to get a little bit out of balance, you have to manually come back and balance it up. I'd say the cost difference is pretty interesting as well. This battery is around $3,400. It has a few more advanced features and has a little bit more capacity at 16 kilowatt hours of capacity but this battery comes in about half the price. It has 14 kilowatt hours of capacity and it's much more basic. So let me know what you guys think about having one large battery or multiple batteries wired together in series. 
Now, as you guys can see, it's super simple to wire multiple batteries together in series to make a higher voltage battery. And hopefully you guys have found this portion of the video helpful. Now I will be testing this battery bank continually to see what happens, to see if they get out of balance. Uh, I had never done a 48 volt battery like this, so we'll see what happens. Now, what I wanna do next, now that we've verified that this works with the 6000 XP, is I wanna disassemble all of this and then we'll do a teardown on at least two batteries. And if the build quality is kind of sketchy, then we'll have to do a teardown on all four, but we'll see what it's like on the inside of two batteries. I have the first battery torn down. I finally got the lid off and I did my best not to destroy the case. So I think it's still usable. There is a little hole in the corner over here, but not that big of a deal. Let's open it up. I'm kind of excited to see what's in here. Okay. First thing that sticks out to me is this huge conductor here. Um, it shows 50 mm squared. I'll have to look up the equivalent, but it looks like it's like one aught cable, maybe a little bit smaller. That is huge. I have not seen a conductor that big on a battery. For the negative terminal, we have three six aug wires in parallel zip tied here. We have another three six aug wires zip tied here going to the battery terminal. For the BMS, um, I don't know, actually you've got English on it. It says attention, this label will turn red if it gets wet. No warranty of product um, got water in, okay. Model is a XZ4S200A163, charging 200 amps, discharging 200 amps. It's a 4S lithium iron phosphate protection board. So that is the BMS, they do have this fiber board between the cells and the BMS, which is good. I do see a temperature sensor here. We already know low temperature charging protection works. Um, let's see if we can remove the BMS and see what the cells look like, see if we get some access to QR codes. Now I was in the process of removing this nut here and I did notice that the balance lead is on top. So that's exactly how it should be. So I just wanted to point that out. Now I've just removed the nut on the main negative terminal and you can see that the balance lead is also on the top. So that's good there. Okay, so I finally cut the BMS off. This thing was glued to the bus bars. Um, I don't really see an issue with that, but man, it was difficult to get it off. Um, you have your balance lead here. So each um, one going to the terminals, these are soldered. I don't see that being horrible. It would have been nice if they were bolted on there. Um, and we do have the temperature sensor, which was pushed between the fiber board and the cell. So it was in contact with the cell, this temperature sensor here, so that's good. Um, I do see brand new QR codes and cells here. Let's see if I can scan them and see where they're from. Now I was able to use my phone to scan one of the QR codes, so I'll include that on the screen. It looks like the manufacturer of these cells is Hythium. Um, it is lithium iron phosphate, obviously. Uh, production date is November 20th, 2023. Um, not much other information on this. Now as for cell compression, they do have this reinforced tape that goes around the battery completely that way. And then they have a bunch going around the battery like this um, to hold the cells together. But uh, yeah, looks like pretty decent build quality, especially for the price. I'm gonna go ahead and put everything back together and then we'll get started on the next teardown, see if they differ at all. Okay, so I got the lid off the second battery much faster. Once you know where the glue is and how it's attached, um, it always comes off a lot quicker. So let's pull this off. Okay, so we're using the same ginormous conductor here. I did look this up. This is one gauge cable. Um, we're using three um, six gauge cables on both sides of the BMS. Uh, basically the same exact setup here. Um, what I'll do is I'll remove the BMS and see if I can get access to the QR codes just to make sure they're using the same cells. Now, unfortunately, as I was trying to get access to the QR codes by removing this fiber board, um, it snapped because this one is glued down way better than the other one. So luckily I do have access to one of the QR codes here. They do appear to be new. I'll throw that up on the screen. Uh, basically everything is almost identical except for the manufacturer is unknown. So this one might not be in the database, but it does appear to be a new cell. Now, after taking the lid off this battery and comparing it to that battery, it's good to see that they're basically identical. Now, one thing that you'll notice with this battery here is that there's no airspace around the cells. Now, if you remember at the beginning of the video where I took the lid off those batteries, remember how much airspace there was? 
Well, if we compare that to this, there is just no airspace. It's exactly the same size as the cells, except for this portion right here where those conductors kind of tuck in and get out of the way. So overall, very impressed with the build quality, especially for the price of these batteries. So I just finished assembling both of the batteries that I tore down and you can hardly tell that these are the two batteries that I tore down. And I'm really careful to take off the lids and kind of look inside because I wanted to continue to use them and do a long-term test on this type of scenario, putting batteries in series, are there issues with having to balance them or you know, one discharging faster than the other? We'll find out as I continue to test them. Now, the only thing that you need to do with these batteries is probably put a bead of silicone around the top just so the lid doesn't pop off as I'm testing them. And I will definitely put out a future video if I have any issues. But if you guys are looking for a battery that has a ton of capacity, that comes in at an affordable price and is super compact, I definitely recommend the compact series from XZNY. Now, special thanks to them sending out these batteries for the video. I've had a lot of people request this type of scenario, putting batteries in series to make a 48 volt battery. How well does it work? Well, as you guys can see in the video today, it works really well, at least with short-term testing. I will continue to do testing on these. If you guys have any other questions about it, make sure you throw a comment down below. And if you like the video, please smash the thumbs up button on your way out. I'll recommend a couple other videos that you can check out. We'll see you guys in the next one.